everybody and welcome back to for the booze for the booze for like, the booze booze yeah we got it. booze it sounds like you have your voice back i do i'm so excited what'd you think of the sound of your voice on the last one uh that was really rough sorry guys i liked it sorry I'm, everybody I'm, I'm gonna miss it you know <laughs> you guys like can, a totally different person it was weird you guys can all <laughs> use your imaginations but i enjoyed it oh my god it was hot but yes Yes, my voice is back, and we're back with Thank another God. episode. Thank God. I won't have to read the whole episode anymore. <laughs> I did have fun, though, and it was a fun episode. And it seems people are really liking it. Yeah. A lot of people are listening. So for new listeners out there, welcome to the Booze Crew and all that good stuff. I'm Megan. <laughs> this is my husband, Steve, for anybody new here. So other than getting your voice back, what's new? Nothing. Working a lot. Same old, same old. Nice. Yeah. Perfect. I, well, we should probably just stop asking each other. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> same for me. Not much going on. New guitars, but nobody really wants to hear about Yay. that. We'll do a music podcast some other time. <laughs> oh, wait, I did do that. This week, we're kind of going back to normal. We have a haunted place. Place. We'll place. Another place. Haunted place. But not in the United States. We don't, but we're not going to give it away yet. Nope. We actually have a listener story this week. Oh, my God. Yay. <laughs> what? I'm super excited. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> it actually comes out from Ben, uh, the from the same uh, Ben Ford, same good place we got the last story. So, Ben, if awesome. you're Thank listening, you. thanks, man. Thank we appreciate you. Thank it. Thank you. And it goes. Dear Megan, Steve, and other Steve, so to answer your question, Auntie did feel a weird, strange presence around this room. But let me tell you another story about a spooky house. The story goes as follows. Another hot summer day in Winona, Mississippi, my aunt, my sister, and myself are sitting outside eating ice cream. And all of a sudden, the windows on the house raised themselves. Something was really in this fucking house. Mind you, my grandmother had left to, quote, go to town to get groceries for the weekend. Upon the windows raising themselves, we realize no one is here but us. We jump the fuck off that porch to run the opposite direction and stare back at the house. There was somebody standing in the doorway and somebody in the window. I asked them, how they got in the house and what they were doing there and they laughed at me. <laughs> Being a tough little boy, I picked up a stick and ran towards the house to protect my aunt and my sister. When I got to the front door, it slams in my face yet again. I didn't pee this time, but I was very scared. The rocking chair in the living room was moving as I could see through the window and I'm standing there petrified. I went to try to open the door handle. It wouldn't budge. The only reason the door opened, according to my account, is because we could hear my grandmother's tires pulling into the drive. Now, I have more stories, but we'll go ahead and save those for another time. Wow. What? I don't know what's going on at this house. The hell. But man, you might need to move out. Definitely move out and then burn it down because that is way too much. There's a lot going on there. Oh my God. I wonder if your grandmother's still alive or even if she's not, is this house still in your family? Ooh, that's a good question. Maybe, maybe we could find it and maybe find some information out about it. That would be interesting. Ooh, that'd be super cool. Ben, again, thank you so much. That was an amazing story. Ben again. again. <laughs> ben again. <laughs> ben again, Ben again. But thank you. Really, really. Yeah, thank awesome. you. We do appreciate it. So if you keep uh, writing them, we'll keep reading, my friend. Absolutely. But we do have to move on to today's topic. That we do. And we are, as you said, leaving the country. And we are going to where? We are going to Canada. To do? The Hotel Fairmont McDonald. And this actually was an earlier suggestion months ago from Ashley. 
at Lullaby and the Fear podcast. So actually, we, we finally did it. Hey, girl, we, hey. We finally did it. We did it. We did it. <laughs> this one is going to kind of be a lead up to some other ones. Yes. Okay, so this one's going to be probably the lightest of them. And as we go on, they're not going to be back to back. Well, I haven't decided yet. But as they go on, they're going to get worse. And we're going to be, you know, we'll talk about this at the end. I don't want to give away too much. But okay. there, there are some other things around this that we'll talk about. With that being said, I think it's time we go ahead and start this one. Let's go. Today's story comes out from historichotels.org, the great and powerful wikipedia.com, Wikipedia. edifiedbenton.com, globalnews.ca. The first inhabitants settled in the area that is now Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, around 3000 BC, and perhaps as early as 10,000 BC. When an ice-free corridor opened up as the last ice age ended, and timber, water, and wildlife became available in the region. Edmonton, like many places in North America, had been inhabited for thousands of years by First Nations groups. In 1795, European traders of the Northwest Company established Fort Augustus north of Edmonton. The Hudson's Bay Company, a competitor with the Northwest Company in the North American fur trade, built Edmonton House, later becoming Fort Edmonton, adjacent to Fort Augustus a year later. In 1802, both forts were moved 30 kilometers or 19 miles south to the Rossdale Flats, south of present-day downtown Edmonton. The forts were briefly moved 80 kilometers or 50 miles north before they moved back to the Rossdale Flat site in 1813. Following the merger of the HBC and NWC in 1821, the name Fort Augustus was dropped, with operations centralized under Fort Edmonton. The fort served as headquarters for the HBC Fur Trade Operations North Saskatchewan District of Rupert's Land. The Rossdale location remained in use until 1830, when flooding forced the construction of a new Fort Edmonton on higher ground. The area presently occupied by the Alberta Legislature Building was selected as the site for the new Fort Edmonton. The decline of the fur trade in the 1860s led to the abandonment of several buildings at Fort Edmonton in the following decades. The fort was eventually dismantled in 1950. The first settlement outside of the fort was in the 1870s. Pioneer farmers living in rustic log cabins along the river these farms formed the structure for the 1882 survey of the land into, quote, river lots. Quote, 1885 Street at Fort Edmonton Park represents the early hamlet of Edmonton. The town of Edmonton was established in 1894, and the town encompassed modern Boyle Street, the original downtown, and Macaulay neighborhoods. In 1870, the Hudson's Bay Company had been granted a reserve on much of the present downtown. But by 1913, the peak of World War I's land price inflationary boom, it was all sold off. Edmonton got its first railway in 1903 when a branch line from Calgary via Southside Strathcona was built to cross the low-level bridge. Edmonton became a city in 1904, and shortly after, with a mere 5,000 people, became Alberta's capital. With the new land west of Queen's Ave, modern 100th Street, available to the city, the city grew tremendously, and Boyle Street was abandoned as the downtown for the new current downtown. Many new communities like Glenora, Highlands, and Westmount were built in this time as the economy started to gain momentum. During the early 1910s, Edmonton grew very rapidly causing rising speculation and real estate prices. In 1912, Edmonton amalgamated with the city of Strathcona, south of the North Saskatchewan River. As a result, the city extended south of the river. The Fairmont Hotel McDonald is situated at 10065-100 Street Northwest at the eastern end of downtown Edmonton. 
the hotel property is bounded by 100th Street Northwest to the north and west, with ATB Place situated west of the hotel. Grierson Hill Northwest bounds the hotel property to the east and south, with the roadway sitting adjacent to the North Saskatchewan River Valley Park System. The building serves as the southern terminating vista for 100th Street Northwest and overlooks the escarpment of the North Saskatchewan River. Located at the eastern end of downtown Edmonton, south of Jasper Ave, the hotel is situated near Edmonton Central Business District and several other neighborhoods, including Riverdale to the east and Rossdale to the south. At 100 years of age, the Fairmont Hotel McDonald has been many things to many Edmontonians. A venue for graduation and wedding ceremonies, a tried and true dining destination and brunch spot, and a band and eyesore. A renewed source of civic pride and, most importantly, a hulking piece of history overlooking the city from its river valley perch. Today, the hotel stands proudly as one of Edmonton's destination hotels. Celebrities and dignitaries alike have graced its halls. Known locally as, quote, the Mac, the Fairmont Hotel McDonald has been an iconic figure against the Edmonton skyline since its grand debut on July 5th, 1915. Setting the bar for hotelier excellence in Alberta, the Fairmont Hotel McDonald has long been known for its elegance and draw as a luxury destination. The idea to create the spectacular holiday destination was that of the Grand Trunk Pacific Railway, which hoped to corner the market on tourist travel to Edmonton at the start of the 20th century. Upon its grand opening, the hotel was hailed as a modern marvel, boasting amenities never before seen within city limits. Catering to affluent travelers heading west by rail, the hotel featured running water and a restroom on every floor, a barber shop, a billiard room, and a telephone in every room. At its time of construction, it was considered a state-of-the-art hotel. In 1915, prices for rooms were $2 per room with hot and cold running water and detached bathroom, or $3 a room with private bath for one person, and $8 and up would get you a room with parlor, bedroom, and bath. The company spared no expense in constructing its masterpiece, hiring the renowned architect firm Ross and McFarlane to oversee the entire project. Built in with chateauesque style architecture, the seven-story edifice includes such renowned building materials as Indiana limestone and copper. It took the Grand Trunk Pacific Railway some four years and 2.25 million Canadian dollars to complete, worth some 35 million today. The hotel was named after Sir John A. Macdonald, the first Prime Minister of Canada. The building was operated by Grand Trunk Pacific until the company declared bankruptcy in 1990 after which the hotel was operated as part of the Canadian National Hotels, a division of the Canadian National Railway. The hotel was one of the first two establishments to be reissued a liquor license by the Alberta Liquor Control Board. After the province repealed prohibition laws against alcohol in 1924, the hotel was used by George VI and Queen Elizabeth during their royal tour of Canada in 1939 serving as a recruitment office in the 1930s to housing soldiers in a makeshift attic barrack, the Hotel McDonald has long-lasting relationship with the military, particularly with the Lord Strathcona's Horse, or Royal Canadians, Canada's lead tank division. The relationship is solidified by a number of Lord Strathcona rooms on the sixth floor, which feature bits of the regiment's history in their decor. In an effort to meet post-war population boom of the city, the hotel expanded in 1953 with a 292-room addition, colloquially referred to as The Box. Because the Hotel McDonald was once the tallest structure in Edmonton, CBC Radio's first local office and studio 
was located in the Hotel McDonald's 8th floor attic. Now, the hotel's current signature suites from 1948 to 1963. The Hotel McDonald's interior and exterior served as the main set piece in SCTV's, quote, Neil Simon's Nutcracker Suite sketch, a send-up parodying filmmaker Neil Simon's California Suite, which first aired on December 18, 1981. In 1983, Canadian National Railway closed the hotel, tore down the box, and announced major renovations to the property. Plans were in place to build a complimentary addition to the hotel, as well as two office towers, although these expansion plans never came to fruition. Thanks mainly to efforts of former Mayor Terry Cavanaugh, the building was the first to receive the City of Edmonton Municipal Heritage Resource status in January 1985. Five heritage areas are included in the designation, the building exterior, the lobby, the Wedgwood Room, the Empire Ballroom, and the Confederation Lounge. In May 2015, the hotel rededicated its boardroom as the Kavanaugh Room in honor of the former mayor. The hotel, along with eight other properties of Canada National Hotels, were sold to Canada Pacific Hotels in 1988, with the company undertaking a three-year, $28 million renovation of the property which included a demolition of the 1953 edition, restoring the original facade. The hotel was reopened by Canadian Pacific Hotels on May 15, 1991. In 2001, Canadian Pacific Hotels was reorganized into Fairmont Hotels and Resorts, adopting the Fairmont name from an American company it had purchased in 1999. As a result of the rebranding, the Hotel McDonald was renamed Fairmont Hotel McDonald. In January 2011, an icicle more than six feet long and about as wide as a tree trunk fell seven stories from the roof of the Hotel McDonald and crashed through the ceiling of the Harvest Room. The incident cost the hotel millions and the room was closed for three months for repairs. And like many old buildings, the Hotel McDonald comes with a lot of talks of secret passages and secret stairways. However, it's not true. Quote, there are no secret passages. The Hotel McDonald was built on an old mine. So there's a rumor that there are secret passages where people bootlegged alcohol in the 1920s and 1930s. But there's no way for the hotel to connect into any old mine tunnels, unquote, said a man named Walton. As many century old building is bound to have a few ghost stories, the Hotel McDonald is no exception. There is a plethora of different paranormal stories throughout the life of the building. There's the story of the sixth floor specter, a well known story of a restless steed, an entity that has been known as the free rider, and the story that is known as the uninvited guest. The Hotel McDonald was named for Canada's first Prime Minister, Sir John A. Macdonald. Because Macdonald was of Scottish descent, the hotel has adopted some Scottish culture, occasionally outfitting staff in kilted uniforms and adopting the Macdonald clan's blue, green, and red tartan as its own. The Mac is also pet friendly. In fact, like some other Fairmont hotels, it had a canine ambassador. Smudge is actually owned by the general manager, Garrett Torta. The old Labrador's gentle demeanor was a calming influence at the hotel, and she became a local celebrity. Globalnews.ca had an article from May 24, 2022. The general manager of Fairmont Hotel McDonald announced Tuesday that his dog Smudge has crossed over the Rainbow Bridge. For years, Guests who walked inside the iconic Edmonton Hotel were often greeted by the sight of the yellow Labrador Retriever hanging out in the lobby. Quote, Today, I said goodbye to Smudge. Rest in peace, my friend. You were a part of my family for the past 13 years, and someone that I went to work with every day for the past 13 years. Unquote, Tortoise said online. Smudge was a member of the hotel chain's canine ambassador program and Tortoise companion, 
For nearly 20 years, Fairmont hotels have, quote, employed dogs to greet guests and provide companionship for travelers who may miss their own pups back home. Most of the ambassadors are dogs that didn't make the cut to become guide dogs. At the Jasper Park Lodge, a black lab named Stanley has been the resident canine since October 2013, when he arrived from the Canadian Guide Dogs for the Blind. Smudge also didn't pass the test to become a guide dog. She was too friendly. So, that trait was put to use at the hotel greeter and morale booster. Quote, Smudge was always at the hotel for guests. She was an ambassador, raised funds for charity, a family member of the hotel and my personal family, and will probably be most remembered for crashing the Premier's conference a few years ago. Unquote. It was in 2017 when the goldest of girls wandered into a council of the Federation meeting at the hotel, crashing the newest <laughs> The Fairmont dogs don't actually live at the hotels. They're owned by a staff member who takes the pet home in the evenings. Torta said Smudge was just shy of 14 and a half years old. Quote, From the previous Fairmont Algonquin in St. Andrews, New Brunswick to Fairmont St. Andrews in Scotland, and now to her final resting place at the Fairmont Hotel McDonald, Smudge shared love all over the world. She always knew how to put a smile on your face, and love was the only thing she knew how to give. Thank you, Smudge, for all that you've given me. Chase those bunnies and squirrels. Eat those treats. Play with your toys. And you can now go swimming every day. Until we meet again. Unquote. And that is the history of the Hotel McDonald, straight till 2022. It's a hulking structure that has become famous to the area, whether it be ghost stories, a place where dignitaries and celebrities stay for a night, a historical location, or maybe just a place to go pet a puppy. Regardless of what this place means to any one person, it's very clear, be it good or evil, the walls of the Hotel McDonald will live on to tell more stories. Oh my goodness. Puppies. The puppies. Puppies. Oh my God. I literally had like a pouty face when she died and like I was super smiley when she like they explained like how she greeted the guests. I think that was really cool. Yeah. I mean, she was just chilling in the lobby. Yeah. And uh, I mean, her literal job was just to be friendly and greet guests when they came in and make people feel welcomed. Oh, super cute. So (laughs) what what a great idea for a program like you take dogs that people tried to put through basically service dog programs and they didn't make it. Yeah. So they put them in to just be cool with people. I love the idea. I That's think it's great. super cool. Almost like a like a hospitality dog or something. Exactly. You know? the ambassador canine. So. Oh, that was super cool. I I really enjoyed that history. I don't know much about Canada or anything. But yeah, I think that I think it was pretty cool how it was kind of torn down, stopped, started again and just kept on chugging, I, you know? I love the fact that they built 292 extra rooms and then ripped them back down, you know, like 40 <laughs> yeah, years later. it's kind of so. strange, but okay. So it's counterintuitive, but hey, I'm not here to judge. But yeah, this place is, it's now, what, 100 and super old? <laughs> <laughs> it's like 100 and, I don't know, 107 years old, something crazy like that. It's very old. And I've seen a lot of pictures of this place, and it it looks like a castle. Wow. It is it's super cool. I, I would love to go here. And I've seen inside the rooms. It, it's beautiful. So this Is, is it fancy? Yeah, it's fancy. It's, it's fancy. It's too fancy for us people, but, you know, I'm going <laughs> to check it out. I'm going to check it out next night. night. I actually read a story that I was going to put in, but I was like, I'll just talk about it, where Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones were up there playing a show. And at the end of the show, he announces to the crowd, everybody follow me back to the Hotel McDonald for drinks. Oh, my God. And they did. And the hotel people who worked that night have memories of it just being the craziest night they'd ever had. I bet. Busiest they ever been. (laughs) I mean, one of the biggest rock bands in history is like, come on, everybody, let's go have a drink. Of course, everybody shows up. So, Wow, that's super cool. Now, as far as any real bad things happening... I couldn't really find anything. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is about this place. It has made the list of almost every single Canadian most haunted places. But Mm -hmm. as we're about to find out, we'll find out. 
So it's just it's a very confusing it's a very very confusing one for me. It's kind of up there with the Turner Ingalls, Ingersoll House. Yeah, it's just one of those things. So we'll we'll discuss it at the end. But as usual, and now you're back. Now I'm gonna sit back and listen to you talk for a little bit. Yay! So it's finally my turn. <laughs> tell me spooky stories, babe. And now time for an ad break. <laughs> And now, back to our show. (laughs) Well, now that I'm back with my voice this week, I am super excited to read this one. This one comes from edmontonsun.com, edmontonjournal.com, and edifiedmonton.com. Perched high on the banks of the North Saskatchewan River, the elegant Fairmont Hotel McDonald has remained Edmonton's stately beacon, graciously welcoming visitors since July 5th, 1915. Standing for more than a century, the building has seen many changes to the city skyline while maintaining its place as a historic landmark. Named after Canada's first prime minister, the historical structure was inspired by 16th century French castles and was the creation of one of the most prestigious architectural firms in Canadian history. During the past 100 years, the hotel has acquired a colorful history that is often related to its guests. As Salar Alemi, the hotel's director of sales and marketing, can attest. Alemi explains, quote, The hotel has an incredible history, and with that comes many stories. One of the best known comes from guests that stayed on the 8th floor. They have reported the sound of galloping hooves in the hallways. End quote. It is said that some of the most regular guests at the historic Fairmont Hotel McDonald have never made a reservation. That being said, the paranormal have little need for keys. One of the century-old hotel's best-known ghost stories comes from guests who stay on the eighth floor. They report hearing the pounding of the horse's hooves through the halls. The story goes that when the local hotel's foundation was being laid back in 1914, one of the horses while carting large stones down into the base of the foundation, was injured. It is rumored that the horse had to be put down, and it was too time-consuming to remove him from where he laid. So they continued and finished the foundation, with the horse permanently entombed. It is reported from both hotel staff and guests that they have heard horse hooves, or the famous clip-clop on the eighth floor hallway and in the basement of the hotel late at night. On other occasions, guests even report a headless rider of this spectral horse, dubbing him the headless horseman (laughs) of the Hotel McDonald. However, the ghost horse is not the only ethereal experience noted a guest in one of the hotel's exclusive suites was the first to report the ghost of a man sitting in a wing back chair smoking a pipe this quote boatman is said to be the 1913 spirit of a sailor from the north saskatchewan river the river was a major fur trade route and steamboats came back and forth past the hotel. An employee named Walton explains, quote, We have one elevator that goes to the eighth floor, but its resting point is the middle, either the fourth or fifth floor. There is no reason to go up to the eighth by itself, but from time to time, in the evenings, it will go up to the eighth floor and then back down to the first. And the story is that there was a bellman who held his tips on the eighth floor, and he is returning for them. 
end quote. But it's not just the guests who have ghostly encounters. The night managers will sometimes have a phone call from one of the sixth floor rooms. When they run up the stairs to check on the guests, the room is vacant. Once, some of the Hotel McDonald's engineers were working on the sixth floor, only to discover that the deadbolt in a room had been locked, but from the inside. When they finally were able to break in, the room was completely empty. Many staff members throughout the years have made claims of objects being put down and moved by some unseen force. Staff, however, regard these paranormal pranksters as good-natured. In the staff-only area known as the Royal Service, or Switchboard, two colleagues were working well into the night when one commented on music, playing vintage tunes from the 50s. When neither remembered the station, they discovered the radio was turned off. While no one has ever found the origin of the ghostly music, it seems fitting for the Hotel McDonald as CBC Radio during that time was broadcast from the top of the hotel, then one of the highest points in the city. Ghosts aren't the only happenings going on at the Hotel McDonald. An article from cbc.ca on March 16th, 2018, reads as follows. The story we are about to read may be triggering and hard to listen to for some listeners. It involves assault on a child. So if you would like to skip ahead, please do. Judge rules Blanchard is a dangerous offender, sending him to prison indefinitely. The image of a chocolate bar in a pool of blood has haunted the victim for four decades. On Friday, hours before his attacker was declared a dangerous offender, the boy who was beaten and sexually assaulted that day in March 1978 stood in an Edmonton courtroom, now a grown man, and recounted the crime and its impact in graphic detail. The victim, whose identity is protected by a publication ban, was 10 years old the day he encountered Lance Blanchard in an elevator in the Hotel McDonald in downtown Edmonton. The child he was that day had ridden the elevator down to the lobby to buy a chocolate bar. When he stepped back into the elevator to return upstairs to his family's room, Blanchard followed him inside. With his wife standing behind him for support, the man told the courtroom about a horrific attack that changed his life forever. He said Blanchard, who was six foot seven, cornered him in an elevator and told him to keep quiet because he had a knife in his back pocket and he would, quote, kill me if I made a sound, end quote. Blanchard took the 10-year-old to the top and forced him into a small area where the ice machine was located. There, Blanchard unbuttoned his pants and assaulted the boy. He then took the boy into the stairwell, forced him to remove his clothing, and used his clothes to tie him up. Quote, Blanchard began beating me repeatedly and driving my head into the steel handrail behind me. The beating seemed to go on forever. I remember seeing the chocolate bar that I was so excited about lying in front of me in a pool of my blood. End quote. The victim said in a statement. Once Blanchard was gone, the victim said he managed to free himself and get back to his room, where he told his father. The police and an ambulance arrived at the hotel. The boy spent the next couple of weeks in the hospital recovering from his physical injuries. But those, he said, were, quote, nothing compared to the mental and emotional injuries I endured that day. End quote. The victim who read his statement in court that Friday 
said he was once a happy boy who loved and trusted everybody. He said Blanchard's attack left him frightened and ashamed. He said, quote, I had nightmares involving Blanchard every night for almost two years. He said he began to wet his bed and continued to do so into his teen years. The first time he saw himself in the mirror after the attack, he said, quote, I was horrified to see my head swollen one and a half times in size. My face and head were severely bruised. I could not recognize myself. I remember falling apart and crying uncontrollably. End quote. He said after he left the hospital and went home, the children in school knew what happened. He said he became disinterested in school and failed two grades after the attack. And as unfortunate as this is, a senseless assault on a child in no doubt feeds whatever paranormal activity is there with fear. Blanchard was convicted of attacking the boy in 1980, eight years before the court started allowing victim impact statements. Friday was the first chance this victim had to address the court. The victim said in a statement, quote, That innocent child that stepped into the elevator in March of 1978 never came out. I was changed forever. End quote. The man said he wanted to see Blanchard's face while he was speaking. Quote, I've waited nearly 40 years for our paths to cross. At age 50, I still feel the anger and rage built up inside me. End quote. And unfortunately, this was really all we were able to find. With the Hotel McDonald being listed on many lists of the most haunted places in Alberta, or even Canada, it's baffling that there aren't more stories online of people having experiences, or staff members having experiences. But we did notice one common thing while doing research for this episode, and it has major ties to other Fairmont hotels within the area that are also known to be extremely haunted. So while the stories may be few for this one, we are only getting started with the Fairmont Hotels. We will be visiting this topic in the near future. What is it about the Fairmont Hotels? What makes them so haunted? That's something we'll have to find out in the future. We want you to ask yourself, what do you believe? Would you stay the night at the Fairmont Hotel McDonald? Are you scared of the man smoking the pipe, sitting in the wingback chair? Startled by the ghost of a horse whose body is encapsulated within the foundation? Can you hear the hoofs pounding and clamor as he gallops down the hallway? Would you answer the phone calls coming from the empty rooms? Can you hear the music seemingly coming from nowhere? Book your room at the Hotel McDonald and see if you can make it through the night. Or maybe you'll have to be among the unlucky guests that check out early. That was a great story. Thank you. And I have to say, even though I already knew the story of what happened to the kid there, it was very hard to listen to. There's more to that story that was left out for a reason. I don't blame you for leaving things out. I I still had to read it, but I left it out. I had not heard that story until I just read it, and that was very, very hard to it's, read. It's there's, yes, it is. Mm. So, mm. if by any chance that person would ever listen to this, I, I really, I really hope you found the strength in yourself to to get through that. I really do. Absolutely, and, uh, and it was horrible, horrible, senseless things. So. No one ever deserves anything like that to happen to them at any point in their life let alone during their childhood. The only reason that it was added into the story was we've mentioned before about how fear and like violence and stuff like that will feed 
a place. It, it seems to be anyways. I mean, we don't know for sure, mm-hmm. but it seems to be something. And that is a very extreme instance of violence and and evil. So if there's paranormal activity there, I felt personally that there's just no way that couldn't have affected that. Right. And, you know, trauma like that and the emotions that come with that during the trauma, after the trauma, I mean, that, that's got to go somewhere, yeah. you know? Well, and how crazy of a story that they just, horse dies as they're working way back in 1950, and they're like, yeah, we're not moving it. Just, I mean, just like, pour it. I, I kind of get it. I mean, I it's guess. a horse that's super heavy. <clears throat> Fine. But, but, like, what? I feel like they should have moved it. I don't know. <laughs> I, this, I agree. You know Her Baumeister would be very upset by this. Yes, yes, he would. <laughs> he would. How dare they? Their their careers should have a chalk line around them. <laughs> Thanks, Her Baumeister. In hell, where you are, I'm going to use that line from now on. Oh my one. goodness! <laughs> that is the Fairmont Hotel McDonald, or however you say it. I, th- I I'm sure I wrote it like four different ways because I kept forgetting. A lot of names, <laughs> but I did find that the Fairmont name is linked to many haunted hotels. Ooh. We we have actually talked about it since this has been written, and this is going to be another unofficial two parter. Yep. No, you know what? No, it's going to be an official two parter. Official. And, uh, official. Official. And this is going to okay. be the first part of the Fairmont line uh, next week. We're going to be doing one that's quite a bit more active and is very well known. So if uh, we do have some Canadian listeners, Canadian listeners, I am sure you know which one I'm talking about. So you'll have to come back next week to hear it. But it's about to get real. So listeners, we started you off easy. That's right. Buckle in. This was a light one. Strap in. Let's go. This was a light (laughs) one. The next one's going to be... It's, it's, there's going to be more to it. There's going to be more to it. Hopefully nothing happens to any children in that one, but oh God, I can't Please promise no. anything. So we have read the stories. We have, I mean, we've talked about it. We've heard the history and the mystery behind it all. Absolutely. Yeah. So even though I forgot last week, that's right, listeners. I know I forgot. My bad. It was a lot for me last week. I did a lot of stuff on the show. I think. <laughs> Cut me some slack. Literally did the whole episode. Cut me some slack. But this week, I'm not going to forget it, and... Is it real? Well, other Steven, <laughs> I'd like to know if Megan thinks it's real as well. So, what do you think, Megan? Do you think it's real? I... I think I'm going to go, like, a 50-50 on this one. I, um... I definitely believe there could be paranormal activity to some extent... But like you said, in looking around for stories for this place, there was a lot of places it was listed, but it was literally the same like three stories over and over and over. So while while, while there may be activity there, I don't think it's anything outlandishly crazy. So I guess yes. <laughs> you guess, I don't. Yes. I don't know. I, I think there is activity, Obviously. but I don't think it's like, oh my gosh, this place is haunted. Kind of. So you think it's haunted? You just don't think it's crazy haunted? Yeah. Like cups aren't flying at people, right? It's just itty bitty tiny little stuff, and that's it. I didn't. Did you not mention in your story that people would put cut things down and they would be moved around? Oh, I'm sorry. There is a part that was supposed to be in there (laughs) where there have been reports of uh, staff members and hotel guests that will put things down and they will just get moved. They'll Hmm. just be moved around and they'll find them in different places. That was another thing that I remembered. Weird. Yeah. So a little bit of poltergeist activity. So what about you, Stephen? What do you you think? I've been back and forth about this. It's really hard for me to give it a yes. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I literally consumed everything I could find on it today. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it is legitimately the same three or four stories that just show up over and over again. 
And somehow this hotel makes it on the list of every one of the most haunted lists for this area, which I don't understand. I can't find any personal experiences. I can't find any videos. I can't find any EVPs. I can't find any pictures. Mm -hmm. All I read are the same four stories. I've listened to podcasts in the past. All they had were the same stories. Everything. I don't understand. I'm not going to say it's not haunted, but I'm not going to say it is either. Right. I'm I'm gonna have to kind of cut it down the middle. I get it. I just there's just not enough there for me. If you're a listener in Canada and you've been here and maybe you had an experience, please write in. I would love to know that somebody else other than these stories that have been out there. Yeah, I mean, these like three, four things. I watched an actual news broadcast uh, from I don't remember the news station, but it was out of Canada, and they talked about this place. Mm -hmm. And because they do a they do a Halloween party there every year, and it's what do they call it, haunted guests or something like that. And the idea is you dress up as a haunted guest or like one of the people from the story, the winged back chairman smoking pipe stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But why? Why? What is it about? There's no stories. I mean, the news is even covering how haunted this place is, but there's no real evidence behind it. Yeah, there's no actual thing. It almost feels like local stories lore and legend thing to me i agree and i just i don't know if i can be like yep those are like real ghost stories you know it's it feels very it's the equivalent of that house everybody walks by as a kid and everybody else goes yes a witch lives there and it's haunted (laughs) yes you know it could be but for me i don't have enough supporting evidence to just be like, yes, it is. I'll mm-hmm. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt because it's over a hundred years old. That right. I am sure some stuff has happened there. Don't mm-hmm. even I'm sure people have had heart attacks or I, I don't know rapes and killing. I mean, we read the story about the little boy. Yeah, stuff has happened there. But why is there no evidence? I couldn't find a one review, not one, with somebody claiming that they had any kind of experience there and that's one that's something we definitely go to when we do hotels and especially hotels and things like that is going to TripAdvisor or google reviews or yeah anything like that because there is if it is like a yes definite crazy not necessarily crazy but haunted place Mm -hmm. there you're going to find someone absolutely if, if not just one, maybe more than one. Another side of that, too, is that I don't think we've covered a place yet that doesn't at least have some YouTube video on it. Yeah. While people have covered this hotel for a YouTube video, it's nothing to do with paranormal. Mm-hmm. And the only two I could find, literally nothing happened. Nothing. They hmm. basically just read all the stories that we did and walked a hallway and was like, nothing happened. And that's the end of it. I don't... Are wow. they... See, when we when we had the same issue when we did the Turner Ingersoll. Yes. Okay, I'm going to use that as my base for this because it's the same issue. It was not a whole lot of paranormal stories out there. But be, with that place, it was because they stopped it from happening. Mm-hmm. I wonder if the McDonald is doing the same thing. Maybe. You know, maybe they're, they're – I, I don't know how they would be stopping it. You know, they can't stop people from going out there and writing a review. Um, But there's got to be a reason. There's got to be a reason. If our Canadian listeners know any of these questions because you live closer, why is it on the list of the most haunted places, but there's nothing there? Yeah, because I was also, I was looking some stuff up too when you were having trouble finding stuff. And I saw that they do like almost like, trolley tours of the town and you know like the yeah but they do like a ghost tour and this is definitely on that list it is is. so it's not like the turner ingersoll house where they just like kind of shut the whole thing down Mm -hmm. like ghost wise down down it's on a haunted tour list Mm -hmm. the hotel is so i don't know this one's a mystery yep but like i said the next one will not be a mystery it is definitely known far and wide and it, it, it's a it's a big one, it, mm-hmm. it, especially for Canada. The next one's a much bigger one. It's much better. Well, it's much more well known. It's there's a bit more to it. So this was just to get us there. But what do you think, guys? You know, like 
you just hear our opinions. We'd like to hear yours. Tweet at Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Hit us up on Facebook, I- Instagram, email. We we, re- we would really like to get your opinions on this. So I think I, I, I think we've done this one as best as we could probably do it. I think so, too. And you know what? I'm sorry, guys. I'm not comfortable giving this this stamp. No. I want to because I love to I love to hear the noise. But <laughs> I can't do it all the time if I have to be. We're, we're both on the fence. I mean, it can, we can't just be yeah. like, yep. Exactly. It's good. Maybe I'll insert some little funny sound. Wah, wah, wah. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> But that it is what it is. We can't. They all can't be. Yes, you know that. If it was, then we wouldn't be being honest with yep, everybody. Absolutely. I mean, I do like to try to find the ones that are more yeses than noes. Of course, clearly <laughs> to talk about. But to be fair to what we are trying to do here, and, mm-hmm. and be honest about paranormal stuff, and you know, in a, a field of people who aren't really being honest, I'm not going to give it the approval this week. So sorry, guys. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. So where can they find you? Us. Where can they find us? Us. I meant to uh, say. I meant to say. Us. <laughs> uh, they can find us on Instagram at for the booze underscore podcast and on Facebook at for the booze. They can also find us on Twitter at for the booze and over on the YouTube if you'd like to watch it on your television or your phone. I'm not going to be here to micromanage. It's for the booze and don't forget listener stories like our friend Ben. Come on, help Ben out. Ben doesn't need to write all the stories. If you do, Ben, that's fine. They were great. Yeah, they're great. (laughs) They're fun stories. So if anybody else does, fortheboos12 at gmail.com. Send in your show suggestions, like locations or whatever. Whatever you want to hear, we'll we'll look at it all. Or your stories or, you know, just say. Anything. Just to say, dang, Megan, you got such pretty blonde hair. I love it. It's beautiful. Whatever you want to (laughs) say, you know. And also, five stars. If you can do it on Apple. That's fantastic. That's where it seems to help the most, and I don't know why, but I don't. I'm not that picky anywhere, anywhere. Hopefully, we deserve it in your eyes. Rate, so. review. We listen. We That's love right. hearing what you guys think. And don't forget to follow and tell your friends. And I, you know what, you, yeah, you, yes, yes, you listening. I think your mom would love this show. You should tell her. Okay, <laughs> but I mean, I think. I think we've pretty much done this one up, so I think we're going to head out. I think so, too. We're probably going to be back with a really deep one next week. So I guess we'll see you on the flip side. See you on the next one, everyone. Bye. Bye. Oh, <laughs>